Hello and welcome to This Is Microsoft. The hell's going on with it? It's not even just Microsoft. This is like the PC space right now. First of all, you've got Intel who are in some financial troubles. Sit down, brace yourselves. They had to suspend their dividend. The shareholders ah! have been... I know, I, I mean, get heart palpitations just thinking about it. It's a big deal. They're not making a bajillion dollars all the time now. They're also losing money because the 13th and 14th gen uh, CPUs have been having some serious stability issues. All a CPU is, is sand that we have taught how to think. You don't want it to return to being sand. Aw, oh, man, I'm running crisis. And then, like, your CPU literally just turns to, to sand. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Intel have some concerns at the moment. They also have not brought out their Copilot Plus enabled chips yet. Their next wave of mobile chips, which will have the full 40, 45, 50, whatever tops of AI performance is still not here. While we have Qualcomm, they've already shipped their stuff. AMD have just shipped their most recent chips that have the full Copilot sort of experience. So we all know that all of the PC space has just been AI, 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 AI. What I've been noticing is the complete lack of quality control. I don't think I'm being too like too broad with that. Sure, like, sure. You remember when we did our video of me picking out a laptop? One of the ones I talked about was an Asus ProArt, and I was like super excited to use that thing. That might be one of the worst laptops I've ever used, and it's all from quality. It's all from quality control. A lot of the problems I'm still I was having with the the pre-production model yeah. are in the retail. I had like. No joke, seven major updates to it since I got it like two weeks ago. One of the updates uh, disabled the Wi-Fi completely. It had the ProArt dial that's buggy as hell. It feels like these companies are rushing out all these products, specifically the Copilot stuff. But it feels like all these things are like, need another like six months. All the Copilot stuff, I mean, that was such a big deal. Microsoft so hyped it up. Yeah. And what we got were the AI features are so minimal and with recall being delayed for who knows how long at this point. I don't know about you. I Like, I don't care about AI that much. I use it pretty regularly. Yeah. For, for various things. I like using it, but like, I would not say it's in, been life-changing whatsoever. I am AI. Well, not intelligence, but you are artificial. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. Eating, you gotta do it every day, or at least you should. But after a long day of working and going to the gym, sometimes the last thing you wanna do is prep and cook an entire meal. Don't bankrupt yourself and get takeout again. It's not worth it. Get something better with Factor. Factor's delicious dietitian approved meals come ready to eat in just two minutes. All you gotta do is put it in the microwave. Complete meals come delivered fresh, never frozen, with ingredients you can feel good about. And you won't get bored either with 35 different meals to choose from every week. And Factor has got a wide variety of dietary focuses too. Calorie smart, keto, protein plus, vegan, and vegetarian. You can also grab all kinds of add-ons like breakfast, snacks, on-the-go lunches, and drinks. I love breakfast. You'll never have to worry about throwing away groceries that you don't use ever again because it's super easy to adjust your order every week between four and 18 meals, or you could just pause and reschedule so it fits your schedule however you want to do it. Ready to de-stress about meals? Well, check out the link in the description or the QR code on screen right now to get yourself 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month with the code this is 50 and thank you very much to Factor for sponsoring this episode of This Is. Now I have absolutely loved the Snapdragon and I think that that is exactly what PC space needs right now to light a fire under AMD to definitely fight, uh, light a fire under uh, Intel. What I have in a Surface Pro in a, such a thin package, I mean, it's expensive, don't get me wrong. Well, I mean, the Surface have always been kind of expensive, right. bad, the keyboard and stuff. But the thing is like, the Surface Pro specifically has always been a device that's been about promise. You had the ability to get this tablet that has run Windows and has all your apps and blah, 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 but you always had to have a trade-off. For a very long time, they were always powered by Intel and you had performance and you had, you know, okay thermals and whatnot, but the battery life was really, really bad. Yeah. But now with the newer Surface Pros, you get that more complete experience where you've got the performance, you've got most of the compatibility. Like I'm totally on board Here, with here's that. Here's the nicest thing I can say about Windows on ARM now. I don't notice it whatsoever. It's so minimal for like at least my daily use that doesn't bother me too much. I will say that I have really enjoyed using the Surface Laptop 7. The Snapdragon laptops have like set the bar for me yeah. that every other Windows laptop needs to reach. The Pro Art I'm using is one of the AMD um, AI Which systems. Is, it's a good device. But like the Surface just feels better. Like the Snapdragon feels better. It feels like it like, it was a don't broke, don't fix it type of thing with like AMD. No. I will say that I had none of these issues with the AMD graphics on the S16. But I'm having, but I'm having it on like just 
browsing. Right, right, right. You have you have deep fundamental issues. Yeah, right? and your laptop also doesn't work. Deep fundamental, deep fundamental issues. issues. I'm really excited about the idea okay. that the Windows scene is getting much much more exciting because we've got more competition from Intel and AMD, and it's easy to kind of just talk crap about like, oh, Intel and AMD need to catch up, and of course they do. But also they're pushing pretty hard right now. Like Intel is really really trying. I think it is where sometimes worth just taking a moment to say, hey, guess what? Everyone is actually making pretty good progress right now. There are other things that are going on because a little inside baseball, a little unsubstantiated rumor for you. The rumors are really starting to percolate that NVIDIA are going to partner with MediaTek to bring out their own Windows on ARM chips. It's been a number of years where Snapdragon and Qualcomm have been the only brand who've been able to make chips for Windows on ARM. What I understand is that that exclusivity agreement is ending in the not too distant future and NVIDIA will obviously bring their graphics to the team and try to build a chip which is competitive with the Snapdragon X Elite. On top of that, there are also rumors that AMD are cooking up their own ARM power chips, maybe moving away from x86 in the not too distant future, now that it will be theoretically open game for other companies to make ARM chips for Windows. That will be, I think, a big sea change. Well, I agree that like all these like co-pilot and AI things aren't super exciting, but I think that what we're seeing right now is like the tip of the iceberg. And I think you're gonna only see like CES next year. You're gonna see this stuff all over the place. I think it's gonna be actually a fairly quick transition. Like it's not gonna be I like a hard Apple time fast. believing that NVIDIA yeah. would get heavy into the consumer space with it. I'm not saying they're getting out of it. Yeah. I do say that they're like, they're shifting focus. It's just, I think there's gonna be a lot more competition. What? NVIDIA printing money right now, okay? They're printing money. These decisions were made years ago, right? They didn't just decide to spin up a chip last year. Like they've been working on this for years and years and years. Now they have the money to skip the line. Like that's, true. That, that's what, I think that's the big yeah. difference here is when they decide to make this like, ah, we this is gonna be a small scale thing because we can't compete with Apple sure. you know, printing out off all these chips. But now they're like, um, well, you know, we could throw a trillion dollars at what it. What would you say if I give you another million dollars? That's not a lot. A billion that's, dollars? That's a little bit more. <laughs> We're looking at trillion soon. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, like, they are a trillion dollar company. Yeah, there. they are. That's it almost is. as much money as this is uh, makes. I make three trillion dollars a year every six seconds. Coming back to, to the whole PC space. Yeah. I feel like we're going to get m way more messy before we get better. We're kind of back to the wild, wild west of things. Yeah. The benefit to having a two CPU system was that everything is kind of optimized for two things. Yeah. It's either Intel or, or uh, AMD. And now it's going to start to get a little bit more, more messy when we start to have way more CPUs, yep. way more graphic options yep. that are not less traditional. One thing yeah. that I think actually people a little bit slightly misunderstand about the ARM stuff, any nerds who are DirectX aficionados in the comments, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But my understanding is the emulation's only on the CPU side. It has nothing to do with the GPU. The GPU, technically, nothing would really stop you if the drivers existed from taking a Snapdragon processor and throwing a 4090 into it. I'd rather you not. I will throw a big you old- You could say something, but- How I don't about really... I throw a portable Xbox at you? Because what? the rumors have been pretty steady that Microsoft are aiming to bring out the next generation of Xbox before the next version of PlayStation. We are going to see the next generation of Xbox land in 2026, which is a mere two years away. We were there at the Xbox showcase where Sarah Bond is like, hey, the next generation of Xbox is gonna be the biggest leap of all time. Like we're hard at work on it. There are job listings on a regular basis showing up about, hey, we're working with hiring like graphics engineers and whatnot. Next year, we're gonna actually start hearing some real information about what that Xbox is gonna be all about. And the also the rumor is, is that this Xbox will be split into two, where there will be a Series X follow-up, and then there will also be a portable Switch style that would replace the Series S. I still don't understand why they would go a, a handheld. There's so many good Windows handhelds. Yeah, but the Xbox interface is so much better. But like, what money do they make on it? Nothing. There's an incentive for PlayStation to do it. There is no real incentive for Xbox to, to build their own. Completely hard to disagree. I, I just, Here's the thing, everyone sees what's going on right now. The Steam Deck is successful. The Switch has obviously yeah. be, been hugely successful. And Windows handhelds are moderately successful to my understanding. There's no way that Microsoft and Sony are not both looking at that go, well, hey, we could do that too. And it's not but, that technically difficult. But, you gotta think a decade ahead when you're thinking about console stuff. What do you think is gonna change in a decade that's gonna change how the business- It's already here. People are already buying Switches. Yep. People are buying Steam Decks. People are largely buying PC handhelds. Why, if you are a serious competitor in the console space, would you not, for a relatively reasonable price, why would you not also sell a portable version of your console? The Steam Deck is a perfect example. The Steam Deck is, for all intents and purposes, spec-wise, a portable version of the Xbox Series S. Broadly speaking, it is just a portable Series S that we have right now. So why would Microsoft and Sony not take that exact same sort of thought process- I agree with you on Sony. On the Series X2 and the PS6. I agree with you on Sony. Make a cut-down version, ship it, 
as an actual portable device that could still be docked. It's obviously gonna be a lot less powerful than the full desktop -y style, like, you know, real console. But like, people want these things. But like, they're already making the money that they- But are they though? Yeah. I feel like there's a reason the Xbox exists, which is largely because Microsoft still make a lot of money by not having to cut in Steam and all these other things. They're making the licensing fee on, on uh, Windows for like a Legion, an, an ally, whatever. Anything that you buy on the Microsoft store, yep. obviously they're making that money. So like, yeah, they're losing the Steam side. It'd be better just to like make a better software experience. What if they actually don't want to make Windows better on handhelds because no, they no, want no. the Xbox they, to be better? No, they make a better Xbox app. That's what I'm saying. Only if it automatically uninstalls Steam. What do you think about the future of gaming? What do you think about the future of PCs? Let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. And again, I would like to please remind you that you do not need to listen to any of Matt's financial advice as much as he loves to give it. One trillion dollars. All you gotta do is follow here and put your bank account number. Do not do that in the, in the comments. We're censoring all of that. That, that and then I will censored personally hand deliver censored. you one trillion dollars. Wow. Just all censored. That's incredible. Probably gonna be Zimbabwe money.